the home runner is fun. It's not like family game night fun or rewatching Shrek for the eighth time fun. It's more like terrorizing innocent people Saturday mornings fun. The best type of fun. But there's just one problem with doing this. How? Like, how exactly can we make someone's reaction when seeing us go from ooh, a free kill, into ooh, I'm dead? How do we ruin the lives of little Timmies who just finished their chores for the day and get a two hour quota of video game time per week? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna learn how to use none other than the incarnated form of cyberbullying that is the home runner. Let's begin our journey with the stats. The written stats of the home runner are as follows. It has the special move of home run or blazing lunge, which we'll talk more about in a moment. It also knocks back players and reflex rockets twice as strong as the stock sword does. This comes at the cost of a 50% slower swing speed and it lacks a strike attack. But let's talk about the star of the show here, the home run. Upon using the special move, you start taking a batting stance and your walk speed becomes extremely slow. This goes on for about a second. You then swing the bat, and anyone directly in front of you takes 50 damage, is ragdoll for 3-5 to five seconds, and takes huge knockback. This will be pretty much certain death for anyone you hit, as long as you swing in the direction of the void. Even if they hit a wall or something, you can easily finish off the ragdoll body too. The swing can also hit projectiles like rockets, reflecting them with quadruple of power, and it can also launch things like bombs, brick boxes, and explosive barrels. If you hit a person or a projectile with a home run successfully, you also get a special status effect that doubles your base walk speed for 10 seconds. Note that you don't get this status effect if you launch something like a bomb. You also get a small little mid-air hop if you use the home run in mid-air. You can cancel out of the attack any time, and you can still get the mid-air hop effect even if you cancel out of it and switch back to the home runner, which can make for a handy, albeit situational mobility option. Other than the home run, the other downsides and upsides are barely even noticeable. It's all about the home run. Knocking people around with your sword is barely ever useful, if not an active detriment, as it can actually push them out of the range of your sword. Reflex being more powerful is barely noticeable, because it only increases the power by about 25%. And plus, if you really want a powerful reflect, you've got the home run. Both of the downsides are also very similar to, or even the exact same as some other weapons that focus on their special move such as the frying pan or the brick breaker, and in every case, they are very ignorable. We'll talk more about the home run later, but for now, let's discuss what other tools you should pair this with. For rocket launchers, you'll want some extra mobility to cover the home runner's lack of lunge. That being said, four good choices come to mind. The laser cannon, arm cannon, Hossog, and the crystal blaster. The laser cannon's rockets combine their forces and give you a surprisingly powerful rocket jump, especially for horizontal mobility, which is just what we need. The arm cannon and Hossog have built-in additional explosive jump power, the arm cannon providing the most powerful jump in exchange for needing an embarrassingly long time to charge up. Seriously, there's probably microorganisms that live and die within the amount of time it takes to charge. It's insane. Although the arm cannon does make up for it with being able to basically become the scope shot at any time. The Hossog does have a rocket jump about as powerful as the laser cannon and reloads faster than stock, but it deals self damage and it can easily add up over time. Definitely be careful with using it. The Crystal Blaster doesn't necessarily have a more powerful rocket jump, but it does reload the fastest, meaning you'll pretty much always have it ready, and you can do some fancy shenanigans with mid air rocket jumps. For bombs, pretty much anything works well. There aren't any bombs that exactly complement the home runner, but there also aren't any bombs that exactly hurt the home home runner either. It's really your choice, but each bomb does have something sort of special along with it. The stock and score bombs are the only ones that can be home run and of course have great bomb jumps. The shadow bomb is the shadow bomb. The sticky bomb is just kind of good in any situation, not really special to the home runner. And the remote detonator is the easiest to batter flight with, but we'll get there. Your super raw slot is probably going to be best used as something that applies a certain debuff or other effect to your enemies rather than just dealing damage to them. The snowball comes to mind as it can make landing a home run slightly easier and it can help you hunt down more shooting players. But then I wondered, hmm, I wonder if there's a super raw that can help me slow down enemies, make for a handy self defense option, and maybe even, oh I don't know, make everyone in the server hate me and wish to watch my bones disintegrate in front of their very eyes. It's the coconut. It's, it's the coconut. 
At first glance, you might think, more knockback and ragdoll? Don't you kinda have another tool literally for that purpose? That's what I thought at first. But then I learned the coconut could basically become an extension of the home runner. It sounds crazy, but hear me out. You've got your miniature or throwable home runner for use most of the time, and then you've got your big boy home runner to use just in case you need it. But I mean, other than those two, there's also things like the bloomerang, I guess. They're pretty good sometimes. There's, there's also the slingshot. Uh, y you know what, let's move on. And finally, for travels, there aren't exactly any particular ones that exactly complement the home runner, except for maybe some extremely situational surprise attacks you can pull off with the Shadow Clone. You can pick whatever you want here, some honorable mentions include the cage trowel for obvious reasons, trampoline trowel for just being good in general and working as a great people magnet for landing home runs, and you could even use the ball turret if you want to make sure nobody has fun in the video game ever again! Now that we've got our loadouts covered, let's go ahead and talk more about the home run. There's a surprising amount of depth to the home run, it's almost like an art form. There's so many ways to do it, you can customize it to whatever your heart desires, it's... It's a lot of fun, to say the least. Anyways, from my experience, there are two main types of home runs. Offensive home runs and defensive home runs. I'll talk about offensive home runs first. So, offensive home runs mainly rely on surprise attacks or otherwise a near unavoidable attack. This usually comes in the form of either dropping down from a height onto your enemies while starting the home run, or explosive jumping horizontally towards them and starting the move mid-flight. The dropping down part is pretty self-explanatory. You just come down from a height, such as jumping off a bridge or using a bomb jump to get above them, and time your home run just right so that the bat swings right after you land on the ground. The timing is pretty strict and the home run's hitbox is pretty tiny, so don't be surprised if this doesn't end up working all the time. Hell, sometimes it isn't even your fault. And then there's, well, these. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with these, and if you don't know already, they're called batter flights. And they are without a doubt one of the most oppressive things you can do in the entire game. The basics of it are that you stand in front of a remote detonator and in the direction of your target, detonate it and start a home run at the exact same time, and if you do it just right, you'll hit them with a home run midair as you fly right past them. It's pretty hard to learn at first, but it sure as hell pays off. If you're looking for a way to eliminate any and all of your social skills you ever had, then this is just the place to start. It is possible to perform battle flights with other bombs, and even some rocket launchers too. But the remote detonator is by far the easiest to use for battle flights, as it gives you just the right amount of control and jump distance. That's offensive home runs pretty much covered. For defensive home runs, they're somewhat the opposite of what offensive home runs are. See, defensive home runs mainly rely on anticipating your enemy's movements and predicting where and when they'll try to attack you. This sounds really complicated, but it's really just randomly starting your home run, standing completely still and hoping that they're stupid enough to walk into your hitbox. It works surprisingly well a lot of the time, especially if they're trying to chase you down already, in which case they'll be more than willing to come within your home run's hitbox just to land a couple sword swings on you. There are some more things you can do to increase the chances of them walking into your hitbox, such as using shift lock and violently swinging your mouse around to effectively turn the hitbox into a radius around you, placing a trowel building they'll be easily distracted by, like a trampoline or a ball turret, shadow bomb, just shadow bomb, and don't even let the name defensive home run stop you. These can be applied just as well for offensive attacks as well as they can for self-defense. That about does it for the two main types of home runs. But home running people is just the start. Remember how I briefly mentioned that you can home run bombs earlier? The wiki says it's called Golf Runner apparently, but the wiki also says the home runner's model is based on the model for the TF2 bat so I wouldn't exactly trust them to have the most precise information. Anyway, this does have a somewhat legitimate use for two things. One, long-range trick shots to put in your montages, and two, long-range Doomspire destruction slash brick collection. The first of the two includes a lot of luck and will fail horribly 99% of the time, but ooh, when it works, it works. I don't think I can explain the dopamine rush you get when the stars align perfectly and you nail some unfortunate fool across the map with some random bomb out of nowhere. I don't think there's a way to achieve a better feeling than this. Except for maybe... well... These. Home Run Reflex. You would expect these to be some super situational, gimmicky, niche ability, and while that is true to a certain extent, I think there's something to be said here. 
So, if you reflect a rocket with your home run, said rocket gets returned, and the rocket's speed, blast radius, and damage are all quadrupled. And with the added bonus of reflected rockets having literal perfect aimbot, you can begin to see how and why this is so deadly. Because <laughs> seriously, what can they do against this? A 400 damage death machine comes charging the way at 100 miles an hour, and before they can even begin to formulate the reaction, they're dead. Actually, not only are they dead, everyone around them is dead too. And if they were sending near Doomspire, a big chunk of that is dead too. And that's all because they shot a rocket. But hey, it's fair in the end. Not only do you need to have insane luck to even have a chance of this happening, but you're not even just relying on your skill either. You also count on your enemy's ability to aim a rocket too. If they miss, looks like no luck for you. Guess you'll just have to resort to some lame, regular home runs instead of the flashy montage worthy stuff what a shame and that's not even counting the crappy hitboxes associated with reflex in the first place i swear sometimes trying to reflect anything is like playing the lottery if the lottery was extremely laggy and there was about a 30 percent chance of you just randomly blowing up and if the lottery's prize was the person who sold you the ticket getting blown up. It, it's a very good analogy, I swear. Uh, anyway, anyway, it's time for me to give you some quick tips on trying to hit one of these flashy reflects. Because, uh, trust me, you, you just gotta try this out. It is so much fun. Number one, try to force rockets out of people. You know, just kinda stand still a little bit so it's easier for them to aim. Threaten them, but don't kill them. Just do everything you can to encourage them to go ahead and shoot a rocket at you before they find out that they made a huge mistake. Number two, definitely keep in mind that you'll probably need to start your home run in anticipation or prediction of their rocket instead of in reaction to their rocket. Because if you only start it once you see the rocket, your home run animation is just gonna take too long and you'll likely just get blown up before your home run even swings. So basically, don't think just one step ahead of your enemy, think two or maybe even three steps ahead of them. Number three, if you ever see a stray rocket flying about, just go for it. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to make some unfortunate rocket sniper rethink their life choices. And number four, just remember that, again, it takes an enormous amount of time to do this, and videos like this make it look easy by just cutting out all the parts where I screw up. And trust me, I screw up a lot. <laughs> Ooh, and I nearly forgot to mention the speed boost effect. So, in case you forgot, home running a player or a rocket gives you a special status effect for 10 seconds that doubles your movement speed. A lot of people mention how this makes the weapon a great hit and run tool. And while they aren't wrong, they're missing out on the great things you can achieve by instead using the speed boost offensively rather than defensively. It makes chasing people down a lot easier and can help you close the gap between long distances such as Doom Spires, where you can find more free kills waiting for you. Alright, we've discussed the home run to death at this point, let's back it up a bit and look at the home runner overall again. More specifically, what should be your general course of action when going about a game? For either of the Doom Aspire modes, two teams, or classic, you can pretty much just forget about blowing up the towers, leaving that to your teammates. What you should do instead is live out your fantasy as the 5th grade bully and constantly attack everyone you see! And you can do this in so many ways, and the home runner opens up even more. You can use basic rockets, bombs, super rolls, or damaging travels, but now you have even more exotic options. You've got the home run, of course, you can try and home run the rockets like we just discussed, you can knock them off the map with your extra base knockback, and you can even go for some crazy bomb trick shot by just home running it. For a deathmatch, just... Just kinda play deathmatch like you normally would, maybe with a bit more of a focus on ambushing, but for the most part, you just play deathmatch. For round cap rally, ugh, now this is where you thrive. Sure, you might not be able to home run people, but you can of course home run everyone's rockets just flowing in. You don't even need to try and bait rockets out of people. Just stand near some of your round cats or build a really tall trust tower so that people will notice you and just go to town. Chances are people will just shoot rockets at you expecting a free kill and nothing more. But what if I told you there's more? That's right, there's something better than just home running regular rockets shot by other people. It sounds impossible, but... But... Mega Rockets. If you manage to home run one of these, you can easily wipe out more than half of the entire enemy team if you're lucky. This... This is too much. We're overdosing on dopamine. Let's go back to home running people. Speaking of home running people, infection. 
If you're a survivor in an infection, just reset. It's way more fun to be a zombie. This doesn't just apply to the home runner either. It's it's just always more fun to be a zombie. Anyways, the home run may only deal 35 damage, but you know it's still there. That's right, the knockback. Since you obviously can't use bombs or rockets to catapult yourself into the enemies, your only chance of hitting a home run is by jumping down on top of people. And as it turns out, zombies have ridiculously good mobility, so it's actually easier to land home runs than normal. The home runner is without a doubt one of, if not the strongest sword to use as a zombie. So the home runner is pretty damn good at what it does, that being both obliterating people and your social skills. But I mean, the great sword is good at that too. So is the Brick Breaker, the Crystal Blaster, the Coconut, the Remote Detonator, and pretty much everything in the game except for maybe the Bridge Trowel. So at the end of the day, what truly makes this weapon special? Well, from my experience, the Home Runner fills two main niches. The first of which being that it focuses on and encourages you to get kills not by outright damage, but by killing people through the void. This is extremely obvious if you have more than two brain cells, and it's not that common amongst combat-oriented weapons. The only other weapons that really fit this niche are the stock super ball, the coconut, the frying pan, and maybe the tennis racket. But the tennis racket is far better utilized as a sword spamming and tower nuking tool. And the second niche it fills isn't as obvious as the first one. The other niche it fills is that it allows you to kill people through their own actions and your predictions. Let me explain. You can punish someone trying to lunge into you by starting a home run in anticipation, and when they try to go for the attack, due to your prediction of their actions, they'll likely end up in the void. While you can predict and punish other people's actions with pretty much any weapon, the home runner gives you the right tools to make it far easier and far more effective when you go for one of these prediction plays. Add this on top of the fact that you can try and do a similar bait and punish tactic with home running their rockets, and you've got yourself a weapon that's pretty good at taking advantage of other players' mistakes. There are definitely exceptions to both of these niches, such as the 50 damage or the home run being able to kill people by itself, and the fact that getting batter flighted out of nowhere isn't exactly your fault, but these are definitely uses that the home runner is more specialized to, and it's more specific than just saying it's good for KOs and calling it a day. Congratulations! You've now officially graduated from Home Runner Academy. You now know all about the Home Runner and you are ready to go use your newfound knowledge for real world purposes. But let's quickly wrap things up here before you go ahead and ruin people's Saturday mornings. So, in conclusion, the Home Runner mainly focuses on the Home Run, which in itself gives you several exotic and interesting attack options, ranging from watching people fly up into the air and never coming back down, to slamming someone with a 500 damage rocket that is quite literally their fault. If you put enough time and energy into using this thing, you'll slowly but surely start turning into the incarnated form of everything annoying you've ever known, harnessing every feasible type of irritation from getting your shirt caught on a doorknob to the third grade bully. And that's the art of it. That's the art of the home runner. No wonder this is Polyhex's favorite weapon. God damn. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, did you home run that? Hey, my spot! This is my cue to jump off a fucking cliff. <laughs>